let's see if we've got this now. Okay, there we go. Let's... Testing, testing. One, two. Testing, one, two. Excellent. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. Yeah, I forgot to hook in the mic. Um, welcome on in, everybody. We on the, in this bitch in the airplane Wi-Fi. Welcome on in, y'all. Uh, it's good to have you. So... I'm coming to you live from the island of Oahu in the state of Hawaii. I've made it. All right. So it has been a long, long time since I was able to stream. Tried doing it in Washington. As you all saw, I just didn't have the internet to support it. It seems to me like we're not dropping frames, so we can do this here. Why are you looking more gorgeous than ever? Probably the sun. Uh, it's been a great couple of days. So let's go ahead and I think what I'm going to do is start off by recapping everything I've done over the last month because it's just been ooh, bonkers. Actually, really six weeks at this point. Um, well, no, not six weeks because you all saw, for those of you who didn't see me in Texas, the first two weeks were uh, me driving to and then hanging around with my homeboy, uh, Lab Boys TV, a little shout out there. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in the great state of Texas. So let's recap from there. So where have I been? Uh, for those of you who somehow didn't hear, I'm moving out to uh, Hawaii. I have done that now, uh, mostly. There's still some other things I have to work with. So this will not be the long-term setup, just saying here. But this probably will be the short-term setup. So uh, where did I begin? Not bad. Got the uh, got the uh, in flight. I guess you've got in flight entertainment now. Uh, I will show you guys the view out the apartment here because it's incredible. Um, it I've got a view of the city uh, and of the harbor, which is pretty good. But uh, first, let's talk about the journey. So, last time we uh, got to hang out, I was in Texas hanging with my bro Lab. After that, I left for New Mexico, spent some time with a good friend of mine there, uh, went through, we went hiking near, there were some petroglyphs near Santa Fe that we went hiking with, had some really good food. I uh, rented a van, for those of you who hadn't seen, I rented a Ford Transit van and uh, went, I boondocked in that several days where I didn't have a place to hang out with friends. So. Uh, first night boondocked in the near the small town of Cuba, New Mexico. Uh, cute girl on the plane a few rows away, suggesting how I hit her from the seat. Got her from the seat. Um, mating call. I got nothing for you on that one. But uh, so I found a place. I'll get to that. Uh, so Cuba, New Mexico is the first night. It was a good time. Second night, uh, second day, I went through. Gosh, this is one month ago. Wild to think. Um, went through the Four Corners area of so that's New Mexico, Colorado, uh, Utah, and Arizona. Weirdly, uh, three of the state, uh, three of those states, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, are in. It's interesting. Shouldn't be hearing much noise. Um, is it like feedback static? Interesting. Let me try and tone it down a bit. Shouldn't really be picking up on anything. The only thing I have on is a fan, but that's really quiet. I can barely hear it from here. I'll uh, I'll turn it off. Tell me if you if it makes a difference. Um, it is rather warm in here. Uh, that's one of the things I've learned about Hawaii. You just kind of live with it being 80. That's just kind of how it is all year round. But uh, Four Corners region was really neat because three of the four areas there and I can you know what I can mess with the mess with the volume and the tuning just a bit here turn the gain down just a touch there we go okay cool in that case I'm turning the fan back on because it is warm in this hoe uh, where was I okay yeah so the four quarters three of them are actually uh, Navajo Nation territory 
Uh, Navajo Nation is actually the only other place in the United States besides Hawaii that does not observe daylight savings time. So the time zones uh, on future streams are going to be a little bit weird because HST is HST year round. It just is what it is. But that means sometimes it's five hours uh, behind Eastern. Sometimes it's six hours during daylight savings time. It's six hours, for instance. Um, big news both May 31st will be my last day at Walmart. Congratulations, bro. You got to tell me uh, what the new job is. Seriously, good for you, man. Um, as for uh, the other one, Colorado, weirdly, this is why I said weirdly, uh, the Colorado chunk of the Four Corners territory is owned by the Ute Nation uh, or the Ute Tribe. Right? You would think the Ute Tribe would be the Utah corner, but nope. That's Navajo. So, spent some time around there. Drove on uh, Utah Highway or U.S. Highway 163 in southeastern Utah, and absolutely stunning scenic views of the Southwest. Uh, highly recommend it. In fact, if you ever know, if you've ever watched the movie Forrest Gump, there's that one scene where he's running. He's been running for a long time, and he gets tired, and he decides to turn around and go home. It's right there. That's in southeastern Utah where he does that. They actually have a little. A little dedication that says, you know, this is where that famous scene was filmed. Which is kind of neat. Uh, a couple days after that, um, went hiking. Uh, I went, I was going to go hiking in the Grand Canyon. Uh, but at the time, the North Ridge, which is the ridge I had taken, wasn't open. So I slept in the Kaibab Forest, boondocked again. Got to wake up with this incredible sunshine view of Grand Staircase, Zion. Uh, Bryce Canyon and a couple others being a CCA in my hometown. Let's go, bro. Love to hear it. Congratulations. Uh, you've earned it for sure. So that's uh, the, the view is incredible. Went through the small town of Kanab, Utah before spending the rest of the day hiking in Zion National Park. It was absolutely stunning. Uh, loads and loads of great views. Very steep hike. So by the end of it, my legs were shot. Uh, roll into St. George, Utah, where a good friend of mine is. Might be joining the fire department. John, you would fit well in the fire department. That would be a good job for you. That That's a good call. Um, hell yeah. U.S. Post Office. Good for you, man. I'm, I'm really proud. Because I know you've been hunting for a different line of work for a little while. So, good on you, bro. Anywho, uh, spent that whole day hiking in Zion. I mean, I put I posted all the pictures of where I was in the Discord, but uh, highly recommend hiking Zion at some point. A lot of the locals don't because it's mostly you know tourists from a, abroad or the rest of the U.S., but it is truly stunning. That night, went to homies in St. George, stayed there for two days. First night, we went uh, rappelling down Dixie Rock in St. George. Second day we went uh, canyoneering in and around uh, just the outskirts of St. George uh, and then we went to walk a canal trail, a derelict canal trail through Hurricane Utah. And this uh, included some places that were like literally built mine shafts. So you'd, you'd hike through the mine shaft. Really, really cool shit. A day after that, traveled through Vegas, did not stop uh, at anywhere besides a Costco to refuel because that city is horrendous um, and drove all the way through California to meet up my f with my friend in Los Angeles oh, man that whole day was crazy hung out with a friend in LA uh, he popped my e-bike cherry and I'll get back to why that matters later um, no I'm not moving to Utah and I'm not becoming a Mormon I'm already a member of one religious cult. Don't need to join a second. Uh, anyway, uh, as far as that day was concerned, so we, uh, he popped my e-bike cherry. I got to hang out, uh, tool around uh, Venice Beach, you know, Del Mar, that area, in uh, a little e-bike, which was really useful because, again, I'll get back to that. Day after that, we go surfing in the mornings. I mostly spend all the time falling off. But I had a blast, and I'm definitely going to try to get into surfing, uh, surfing here. What religious cult is that? I'm Catholic. I just like to joke about it. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, so, went surfing at first, came back, had a really good burger and a kale salad because, well, it was Los Angeles. Um, then went back to his place, 
and I decided to grab my lifting equipment and go to Muscle Beach. So it's the famous public beach there in Venice, California, uh, where that and the OG Gold's Gym is right there. And every so often, so I went and lifted, and uh, while I was hitting bench, I was repping at 275, who else comes along on their bike besides the OG, the GOAT, Arnold Schwarzenegger? I'm not kidding you. Arnold himself biked by just after I finished my bench set. Words kind of, I mean, that's it. For guys who are into lifting, I mean, that's, he's the GOAT in a lot of senses. Uh, he, he brought so much knowledge or so much public awareness to the sport of lifting and bodybuilding. But, I mean, dude was Mr. Olympia, what, I think seven times? Freaking crazy. So, you know, it, he didn't stop, but we all, like, everybody in the pit there in the gym, we all, like, stopped what we were doing. We're like, oh, my God, oh, no, yeah, let's go. It was just fantastic because these are all, like, yoke dudes, right, in, in this gym. These are all dudes who go in there and show off for the Insta because this is, it's L.A., it's Muscle Beach, it's what you do. But everybody, <laughs> it's hilarious seeing a bunch of yoked dudes instantly fanboying and going all the way over to the side uh, because it's Arnold there. And he looks pretty good. He's in his mid-70s, and he's in better shape than most people 30 years younger than he is. Um, no, I'm not in L.A. Uh, so, gains are temporary, legacy and respect are forever, absolutely. So, that was the afternoon. Then the evening, I go up to the Hollywood Hills uh, on the Sunset Strip, drove by the Whiskey A Go Go, you know. If you're into music, right, that's where the Doors got started, Guns N' Roses got started, I think Metallica got started. There's several really, really big uh, bands from L.A. But uh, I ended up pulling into, this is this really nice sushi place that my friend who is uh, LAPD, he was there. And I, I get out of the car, and I get out of the van, and I'm waiting for him so I, I go over to the edge because it's got this really good scenic view over LA and air was clear that day so you could get a picture of the skyline so I did and just while I'm waiting uh, to go into the restaurant dude in a brand new Ferrari uh, brand spanking new white Ferrari pulls up and you know I can tell like he's he's a good looking dude but he's like in his 50s he's got this fake blonde hair fake tits uh very clear kind of arm candy LA girl uh, in the passenger seat uh, and I was talking to the parking guard because I was like yeah I've never seen this view before and the, the car pulls up and he's and I'm like oh my god look at this car he's like the car look at the girl I'm like the girl look at the car uh, so he gets out I'm like yo sick ride man and he's like oh thanks so I asked him oh do you know do you ever go whipping this bad boy around Mulholland racing it tracking it and he's like yeah actually I used to be a famous racing driver and uh, I forget what his name was off the top of my head, but uh, I said, that's sick, you know, I used to do Formula SA in college, he's like, really? So do you know about unsp unsprung weight, right? And so we get into this nerdy-ass discussion about why he got carbon fiber wheels, which made sense, and why he got really low-grade tires. He's, it, quoting him, it was because the car didn't misbehave enough to his liking. <laughs> but all the while, we're nerding out right here. We're nerding out like crazy. And the, the girl is, like, getting really, really pissed because nobody's paying attention to her. And, like, we're just nerding out about the car. And, like, eventually uh, my friends pull up. And so, you know, I'm like, thank you for your time, man. I, you know, have a good evening. You know, I didn't, mean, I didn't want to keep him for any longer than he wanted to talk to me. And I didn't. But it was just really funny. I could tell at the, I could tell at the corner of my eye, like, this... This girl was not used to being ignored and did not like it. So this is, you know, most people would call her the 10 out of 10 girl. But, uh, yeah, that, that's a uh, giga chat engineer moment, I guess. That's, that's how I'm going to call that. Anywho, um, that was the night in LA. The sushi dinner was incredible. I love my uh, friend there. Oh, one other thing about this place. We walk in, in the front of the restaurant. Again, this is the Sunset Strips. This is where it's going to be mint condition mid 80s lamborghini white countach like the the car you saw in the wolf of wall street that leonardo dicaprio fucks up because in the movie he's on quaaludes like that exact car just chilling out front one of the patrons wa patrons walks in turns it on fires that oh that amazing v10 up 
and just drives off. And I'm like, did that just happen? Uh, so it was just an incredible night. Uh, I spent the night boondocking up in Kern County, just over the county line in the mountains, because uh, it was nice and cool, felt really good. Uh, and then the next day, drove through Bakersfield, the most based city in California, fight me. Uh, Merced and all the, uh, like Fresno, Visalia, all the towns in the Central Valley, all them farm towns. It's really cool. If you drive along the 99, you can see uh, God's Blanket, what inspired the road trip. M wanting to see as many friends as possible while getting from one end of the country to the other. And I'll explain. It'll all make sense once I say everything. I know I'm rambling, but there's no other way to do this. Um, so we go up to 99. Uh, I go hiking in the Sierras in Mariposa County, and then uh, that evening head to the town of Stockton, which is our good friend, uh, the home of our good friend uh, Hie. Let's see if he's in here or not. He is not. Um, our good friend Hie is in uh, Stockton, so I think that was, who was asking that earlier? Was it Big Red? Mr. Iberica? Yeah, uh, Big Red was asking you. So, funny enough, that was, I got there just in time for the draft, and the Bears were first overall. So, uh, you know, the dumpster fire that's urinating tree and uh, five points vids, you know, they were doing their, their draft thing. They invite Hie on because he's Mr. he's Mr. Bears fan on that channel. And so right behind, all of a sudden, you see a cowboy hat slowly rising up behind him, and it's me. They're like, hey, what the fuck are you doing in California? And I explain. I'm like, yo, I'm on this big road trip. And so it was, it was a fun little cameo. So if, if you had watched the, uh, the dumpster fires draft, you, you saw me there in California. So it was a good time. Um, we hung out that night, and then the next day we went into San Francisco, which I wasn't expecting to do. I thought we were just going to kind of hang around the, the valley, but uh, it was really nice. Uh, went and saw friends in San Bruno and then took the train into uh, the city itself. Gotta say, um, I really enjoyed it. I was expecting to, you know, I, okay. I was expecting the whole city to be a giant homeless encampment, frankly. Uh, and it really, it sounds like San Francisco kind of does things the way L.A. does. Uh, I don't think not quite, I think L.A. does it slightly better, but, like, they keep it to one area in particular. It's Skid Row in L.A., you don't want to go there. It's the Tenderloin in San Francisco, you don't want to go there. But otherwise, the cities are fine, um, like, to get around. You don't feel unsafe, you don't feel... Interestingly enough, I did not see any poop anywhere in the streets. I was expecting to see poop somewhere, at least. I'm sure if I went to the Tenderloin, the poop map would be very accurate. But, uh, like, I went through, I went, walked on Embarcadero, through Fido, through Chinatown, got me some really good uh, fried rice and some uh, dim sum. But uh, nothing, nothing in terms of, you know, I, there's this image, drug needles, none. I didn't see any. Um, again, I was really expecting kind of San Francisco to be like, holy shit, what are they doing here? But honestly, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. Um, oh yeah, LA, in terms of design, okay, that's a totally different topic. Yes, LA is aft. LA is slowly fixing shit because they're actually trying to gear up for the Olympics in 2028. Apparently LA's new mayor is doing a pretty good job on that front. Um, I was talking to, you know, my buddy in LAPD was saying, yeah, this is the first time the cops had gotten a raise in a long time. And look, you can say whatever you like about the cops, but LA in particular, that is being a cop in LA is not an easy job. So, you know, you're dealing with some of the most violent criminals in the country there because it's a, it's a big city. You're going to have crime syndicates there. So it's a, that's, that's tough to do if you're a cop. So credits to, uh, LA's mayor, but yeah, I had a good time in San Francisco. I really didn't expect it, uh, but it was awesome. And then uh, ending up, we drove. Uh, oh, I got to see a chunk of a Giants game. I visited the stadium, went to the little, uh, went to the little part where you can view through the chain link fence, which is really neat. Uh, waved hi at the uh, the boat gang there, the people who kayak out on the edge of Oracle Park in San Francisco and wait for baseballs to go over the fence. Um, but yeah, it, it was a it was a good time. Uh, and then at the end, we drove, ended up driving uh, on the bridge back to Oakland, and uh, stopped at Treasure Island, and I got to see the San Francisco skyline from Treasure Island, and wow, I, I mean that that's incredible. That's extremely beautiful. So I get why 
Okay, I'll be honest. I get why people live in L.A. I'm not quite sure I would ever want to pay enough. Like, San Francisco was great, but I don't think I'd ever want to live there. Um, definitely. I, I appreciate it a lot more than I did, but I don't think it's the town I'd choose to live in. I would... Like, if I was looking to pl for places to live in California, I'd probably pick somewhere in L.A. before San Francisco, and I'd probably pick somewhere in the Central Valley before either. Um, Bakersfield gang. <laughs> um, okay, so... Next day, I drove up... Actually, this would be the other part of San Francisco... Or the other part of California, I'd consider. I drove up five uh, into the mountains and hiked around Shasta the next day, so... Uh, anything between, you know, that, that northern chunk of California is unbelievably beautiful. Unfortunately, you know, it gets plagued by wildfires every year, but absolutely stunning. Uh, walked up until I hit the snow line, uh, and then I realized, oh, yeah, I packed all my shit for Hawaii. I don't have the capability to go any further here. Um, San Diego's nice, but it's even more expensive than Hawaii, so not sure I would do that. Um... Like, I, if you offered me, right, for the same money to live in San Diego, you can live in Honolulu. I'm going to tell you right now, one is better than the other, and San Diego loses that battle ten times out of ten. Um, so that was, Shasta was really beautiful. Uh, ended up driving up to Oregon the next day, and I was going to do Crater Lake, but it was like 35 degrees and rainy, so I said, screw this, I'm going north. Stopped at Corvallis just to check it out. It was a nice little town. Uh, and then up to my family's home in uh, Washington. So I've got family who lives close enough to Tacoma. Spent uh, about a week there. Just went hiking around. Stayed pretty local. Didn't even go into Seattle, which kind of sucks. I do like going into Seattle. It's a fun city. I like Tacoma more, actually, um, just from a... Okay, so the best analogy I can give you, for those of you who have never been to Washington State, um, Tacoma is to Seattle what Oakland is to San Francisco. Much more blue-collar, much more industrial, much poorer, um, but really has a good heart to it. So I really enjoyed it. Um, just it was, it was a good week and change. Got to see both of my brothers, which I wasn't expecting, um, but that's how the cards turned out. So that was really kind of nice in the sense that, you know, if I'm going off to the island, well, last time it'll probably happen for a good long while. So May 9th, fly out uh, to uh, any Gonzaga fans in Tacoma. Are they Wazoo fans? Most people west of the Cascades are UW fans. So Tacoma is going to be mostly Washington fans. There are some Cougar fans, but not quite as many Gonzaga. Gonzaga fans are mostly eastern Washington, like around Spokane. So... You know, Wazoo is also, re really, I would say, the the Cascade Mountains of the Divide. Like, in the Tri-Cities, you're going to see a lot more Wazoo fans. But, uh, you know, Seattle, Tacoma, Bremerton, Bellingham, any of those areas, you know, in and around Puget Sound, it's, it's UW. Uh, so that was, that was Washington. May 9th, I fly out to uh, Oahu. You know, the flight actually was really nice. Um, gotta say, credit where it's due. I, I really dig Delta Airlines. Um, they have been very good to me the last few years, so I try to fly with them. I don't even have a Delta card. I'm not being paid to say that. I just, I've flown United, American, lots of others, and Delta consistently has, uh, provided the best service for the, you know, for the price. Uh, first few days here, I've been spending, uh, with a friend. And I will be spending a little bit more time here. But to go any further, are you going to go live on Discord anytime soon? I could. Um, I wanted to stream live first. The first few days here have been extremely hectic. And this is this is really the first day I've had a chance to just take a breath. Uh, but before we go any further, what I would like to do now is show you all just where I am. Uh, so, let me undo the knot. There we go. Okay. Is it gonna let me? There we go. Y'all can see that? Uh, that big blue body of water out there, that would be Pearl Harbor. Uh, so, to give you a reference point, uh, that is my view. It's unbelievably pretty. I'm, uh, 
Not going to show you any more detail because then you could probably figure out where I am. And since I'm staying with a friend, that wouldn't be cool. Um, there is one other thing. Let me move it, but I'm going to show you guys the new whip too because this is incredibly important. One of y'all said you liked e-bikes. Well, check this one out. What do y'all think? That's the new whip. It's a fat tire Magicycle e-bike and it's lime green, which I'm actually really stoked on because uh, since it is that really bright green, uh, it's really like if it ever gets stolen, it's gonna be really hard for the cops to find. And more importantly, at night, a color like that is going to be a lot more identifiable to drivers. But I have chosen to go with an e-bike instead of buying a car. Now, why did I do that? Well, there are several reasons. The first is, uh, actually, hang on. Yeah, we're getting there. Cut cycle still got a little bit more to go, but uh, it's not terrible. We're working on it. But... Uh, it's great. So far, I've, I've ridden it about 90 miles. Um, can go 20 miles. Yes, I did relocate to Hawaii. So I'm not vacationing. No, I moved here. I have a job here, uh, and this is where I'm going to be. So, like, it's it's permanent. I'm, I'm staying in Hawaii. Now, this is not my permanent place, uh, this room. This is temporary. Uh, in the long... I'll talk about my house. In the long run, I do have an apartment that I already found. So the first few days here were spent house hunting and getting that e-bike. Um, that thing can go 28 miles an hour. It's got a range of about 35 to 40 miles if I'm, you know, really hitting the throttle hard. Uh, it, I've really enjoyed it. Pecs are looking swell. I appreciate it. Um, cut cycle's been going okay. I'm somewhere in the low to mid 220s. I'd like to get down a little bit more. I feel like I've still got five to ten pounds of fat I could move, uh, lose off the front, but uh, you know, you just gotta wait and be patient on that. Give it time. So uh, the first few days I was flying around on that e-bike. It's been great. There's been one issue with the brake sensors that uh, they're warrant warrantying out the part. No big deal there. And then one of the handlebar uh, was not properly tightened down. So I actually ended up, I had to hit the brakes hard, and the, the handlebar went poop forward, and then I almost went ass over a tea kettle, but managed to salvage it, so I didn't die. Uh, so we're good there. But um, otherwise, we, let's see, what else was I going to say? Oh, uh, how much did it cost? So this is the cool thing. Now, obviously, right, you're on the island, you got to pay island prices. I went to a brick and mortar store instead of buying it online because I wanted it immediately that I could, you know, ride off on it because I needed transport here. The bus is okay here, but the buses are really slow. Uh, the rail is incomplete at the moment. Uh, the next stop, I can't wait for the next stop to open because it's going to be the Makalapa stop, which is going to be right at Pearl Harbor, which obviously will be very useful for a guy like me. Uh, but ended up... Uh, Ended up hunting, uh, I, I decided to go with an e-bike because the other thing is the state of Hawaii uh, allows us to, uh, or the state of Hawaii um, has a rebate program. So if you buy an e-bike and sign an affidavit that you don't have a car as well, you get a $500 rebate towards the purchase of your e-bike. So that's pretty great. Uh, all things in, so that's e-bike. And needed a new helmet, needed a lock, wanted an extension for the lock, uh, rear basket, a couple other things. Um, but all, all in $3,500, which is on the more expensive side, but this is also a fat tire on the island, right? Class three, not class two, so I can go 28, which around here is super useful because apart from the highways, the fastest road speed you ever see is 35. Like, I've, I don't think I've seen a single road at 40, 45, or 50 miles an hour. Actually, I take that back. Some of the interstates, some of the H1 is 50. Yeah, um, 
this was sort of the other thing. Apart from the interstates, like a, a car is just a terrible thing to have here. It's such an it's such a burden. It's such an inconvenience. And of course, gas prices predictably are not low here. Well, actually, I still think they're low. I just wish gas prices and milk prices were flipped. But that's a that's a ramble for a different day. Oh, what's up, Dodger? Good to see you. Um, so 3500 I think it was actually like 34 or something uh, all in. But then a $500 rebate is going to be applied in a little while. That's got plushy boot. Let me go get Ferdy. Yes, uh, Mr. Ferdy did make it. Oop. And he lost, his, he lost his bandana. It just fell off him. Put that back on later. Ferdy's naked. So Ferdy boop, says aloha. Welcome on in. He's real excited. He's got... Uh, He's he's enjoying it too, so go ahead and put we'll put him right here in the background. Anyway, so uh, you know, in three thousand dollars, people are people are gonna say three thousand dollars for a bicycle. What the fuck are you doing? But you gotta remember something, okay? If I'm using this as my day to day transportation, this means I don't pay gas costs, I don't pay insurance costs my maintenance costs are way lower because a bicycle even an electric one is going to have far 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 cheaper and fewer parts to fix right i don't have to worry about first off it's also good for my health because i'm burning extra calories when i'm pedaling on it yeah you can just use the throttle exclusively but it's a bicycle pedal you know uh so that's been really good um but you know you save all of that like even with my volt right so i can look it up here um per my budget you know my volt i was having to pay uh you know almost about forty dollars a month for insurance so that's what four hundred and eighty dollars in a year then fueling up you know i didn't do it often in uh 2023 but you know that's still 100 200 dollars a year so that's now you're talking 650 dollars a year Maintenance costs, even for my Volt, where items do occur, so you're talking another couple hundred bucks a year. Now, all of a sudden, you're talking about 1000 bucks a year, and that's for, like, the cheapest car you can buy. Not to mention, even with my Volt, I had to pay slightly higher electric bills. Now, electricity prices are very high out here in Hawaii, but uh, my e-bike, right, it's only about a one kilowatt hour battery. So, out here, electricity is something like 30 cents a kilowatt hour, which... That means when I go ride that thing to fill it up full of electricity, it's about 30 cents. Um, how is it only $40 for insurance? The Chevrolet Volt is such an underrated car uh, because it's a five-door economy hatchback that insurers think only has 140 horsepower. Uh, they ignore the... They, they strongly ignore the uh, the 294 pound-feet of torque at zero RPM. That makes that car way more fun than you'd think. Um, people say it's cheap for a car transportation just off as most Americans use their cars exactly the other thing is the US Navy comps uh, your uh, transportation fees for public transit so there are also express buses so all you know if I need to go further or you know it's raining or whatever I can still use public transit and I pay nothing for it so you know in the long run I could see myself up out in you know Kapolei or you know, somewhere on the, the Eva side of the island just because the rail goes all the way out there and they're building a lot more stuff on that side of the island because there's still open space to do it. Personally, I'd be fine with just having a normal bike. See, here, so many roads are 25 miles an hour that an e-bike makes it so easy. Um, you know, especially, like, dude, if I've already done leg day, I'm going to be sore as hell. I'm not going to be able to pedal 20, 25 miles an hour consistently. Uh, after a leg day and then going uphill because Oahu is fairly hilly so uh, having having an electric uh, assist for that is it's so nice dude it's worth it 100% um, recommend e-bikes as a great transportation alternative solution so um, okay so the house y'all saw my two roommates right first roommate was Dodger Dodger has since moved on I'm sure she's talked about that whenever she streams on her channel so you know what that reminds me let's go ahead and give her a shout out because Dodger's awesome and we like her 
she's had a really good run of things. It sounds like she's got a really great project in the works, y'all. So uh, keep an eye on, on, on what Dodger's doing. I think she's got something great. They live in flat Illinois. So were, yeah, so if it was, if Oahu was as flat as Illinois, it probably, yeah, um, probably would be a little bit easier. So like, for instance, for one of my apartments I was looking at, uh, required me to go from uh, the base at Pearl Harbor through the uh, Aliamanu crater to get to it. So I don't think I need to explain to you that a crater is by its definition not flat. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously that one uh, oops there we go. Ferdy's on the screen that way now. Um, yeah crater is is not particularly flat so yeah um, that one's a little, that, that's, that's one example of why maybe in Oahu it makes sense. Uh, as for the house, so y'all know Dodger was one of my roommates. The other roommate y'all saw, uh, he is still living there and he's renting out the whole thing. He likes it a lot and he wants to buy it. What we've talked about though is I'm, I'm happy to let it happen on his schedule because he is uh, waiting for interest rates to come down. He's got some other reasons too, but that's the biggest one, right? Why pay at seven? Per, why get a loan at seven percent when you can get a loan at um, when you can get a loan at you know three or four percent? Should the Fed reduce interest rates? I don't know when or if the Fed will reduce interest rates, although I think eventually it will. But uh, what this means in the long run is I will sell the South Carolina house. I will sell it probably for a decent profit. Uh, from where I bought it in 2021, but in the meantime, we're we're doing pretty good. Seven dollar percent, not good. Well, so Mike, that's the thing. I don't have an incentive to sell it any faster than I have to because I'm paying 2.375 percent interest on a 15 year loan. So a very large chunk, more than half uh, of every mortgage payment I I make is principal already, and that includes insurance, taxes, and the rest. get the mic a little bit more ideal um oh taylor jade pity girl uh if you were on the discord we could have hung out i drove right through la um appreciate that i'm now in the uh great state of hawaii so shaka bro missed the opportunity but um Oh, what was I was just saying, uh, as far as the house is concerned, so I'm happy to let the rent ride. Uh, you know, obviously, because he wants to buy the house, he's going to keep it in good shape because then it becomes his uh, house to maintain. So it's really a win win, and I'm, uh, I'm, it's a win win uh, for me. It's a win win for him. It gives him the flexibility to buy it when he wants to. I'm covering, you know, my mortgage payment with the rent. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, if you were, Taylor, this is why you got to be on the Discord, because, like, I posted repeatedly my schedule. Uh, I told y'all what days I was in L.A. I mean, I went surfing. I went to Muscle Beach. I even saw Arnold go by. I was talking about it earlier. I went to uh, the Sunset Strip. Um, that was pretty dope. Um, and then, actually, for those of y'all who don't know, speaking of, my birthday is tomorrow. There you go. You can now you know when my birthday is. So uh, yes, believe it or not, I am a. I can thank Dodger for this one. I am actually a Taurus. So yeah, tomorrow's my birthday, y'all. So uh, tomorrow I have managed to rig this so that uh, I am unemployed, uh, with nothing to do, with my house or house situation already solved. Which uh, to conclude that little. Uh, chunk of my spiel. I figured out where I want to live. The trouble is uh, they can't let me in until mid-June, so I've got a temporary place for the for the meantime. But uh, now what that means is I'm gonna have I'm gonna have um, tomorrow. I'm gonna have my birthday off. Oh, thank you very much for the bits, Taylor Jade. Um, but I'm gonna have my birthday off in Hawaii with really nothing else to do besides lift. That's probably what I'm going to do. Are you going to get a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Dating is not on the top bit of my priorities list right now. 
figuring out the island, making sure I'm doing well at work, uh, getting my workout regimen kind of nailed down, and getting into my permanent uh, residence here are going to be the first priorities. So we'll look we'll look towards the summer, maybe more July, August to start peering into dating. It's just it's not uh, it's not prudent. Did I get a fat raise when I moved? Believe it or not. Birthdays on the 22nd. Well, happy birthday to you, Taylor, and happy birthday to you, Eris. Uh, early birthday. Um, did I get a fatty raise when I moved? So, not really. Uh, I did get a raise at the time. So, for those of you who were curious, um, I was making 97 in uh, South Carolina, and I got offered 105 here. Now, obviously, the cost of living difference is high enough to where that's not covering it, but... This is the nice thing about being FI, which, yeah, okay, so the clock here says 351 days. Because the stock market has been doing so well recently, I'm basically already at the FI point. Uh, but since I have this cool new job anyway, I'm still going to be probably socking away, okay, maybe not 100% of my in, sorry, maybe not uh, the 75, 80% of my income that I was saving in South Carolina. But I'll still probably save close to, if not quite, 50% of my income here. Uh, not to mention, I am slated for raises, assuming I do well at my job with uh, the first and the second year that are fairly substantial. Um, so I would say that's the thing. Uh, God's blankie, that's correct. So I was looking for a new place for a little while. I kind of I felt like I was getting bored in South Carolina to the point where had I stayed there, 2024 would have just been a repeat of 2023, which I'm sure for y'all, y'all would have loved that, but like, eh, where's the personal growth and development? So uh, to grow, you need to take on new experiences, and this is one where it just seemed the best. I also had an offer from Puget Sound Shipyard in Washington State. I uh, decided against that one and went to Pearl Harbor instead because I've never uh, lived out here, and I think it would be a really fun adventure. Uh, where is Hawaii on your state tier rankings? The jury is out. Hit you up when we go down to Hawaii end of summer. Let's go. Absolutely. I am about it. Uh, Taylor, please get on the Discord if you're not, because uh, that way you can DM me uh, to set that up. Much easier that way than by Twitch. Um, where is Hawaii on my state tier rankings? Actually, having just done that big trip uh, of the West, I need to revisit that tier list. Maybe we'll do that uh, one of these days. Um... I suppose I could probably do it on here, couldn't I? Huh. Well, we still got time. Maybe I'll... Okay. Um, I'll answer questions, and if we've got time, I'll, I'll go back to that tier list ranking. Right now, uh, you know, I'm still... I feel like I'm still in sort of, quote-unquote, the honeymoon phase. Uh, but Hawaii... The only criticism I can truly give it is the cost of living out here is insane. Uh, I have definitely been dealing with sticker shock uh, getting out here, right? Gas is four seventy-five a gallon, honestly kind of cheaper than I expected it to be. I figured it would be in the California range. It's more in the Washington range. Um, electricity is expensive out here. Food is... Okay, the, the rule for Hawaii is if you can go to Costco, it's not so bad. If you go anywhere else, be ready to pay, and pay a lot. For instance, yeah, see, you living, that's the one thing. I, I went through California, so I got out here and said, oh, 475, that's not bad at all. Because um, I saw what it was, both in LA and San Francisco, and Jesus Christ, California. That, well, actually, that's more like it, because I'm a big fan of high gas prices, as we know. Uh, so I, I love it. Uh, out here, frankly, I wish the gas prices and the milk prices were switched. In other words, I wish milk was four seventy five a gallon and gas was $8 a gallon because that's what milk is out here, and it hurts my soul. Uh, $8 a gallon milk. Look, I get it's an island, but just... Oh, uh, uh, it hurts. Just seeing that hurts so much. Um... Do I plan to buy or rent out here? Um, if the economy goes down the toilet here, that would be the only way I would buy. Like, right now, 
So the house I had in South Carolina would be a seven-figure home here, probably closer to two million than one million. Um, for reference, I bought that house in South Carolina for well under uh, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So it's like it's like a factor of ten difference here. Um, as a result of that, eh, the idea of and then if, even if you want to buy a condo or an apartment. Um, well, when you do that, you have to pay massive HOA fees here. And it's just, I look at that and I, what's this worth? The only reason you would do that is if you think the equity you're going to get, the value of that home is only going to continue skyrocketing. Which, because this is Oahu, that's a possibility. But I would just as soon rent and be happy with that. We're doing 639 on 97. I drive by gas stations and roll my eyes. Oof. Yeah, that's um, that's rough. Yeah, reckoning three twenty five. That's a it was uh closer to three even in South Carolina. People like when I told people all my friends out here just how low the cost of living was in South Carolina, they're like, so that's why you liked it there. And I'm like, people sleep on the deep south for a reason. Hmm. But realistically, short term, at least for the first few years, uh, God's blanky. There's no way I would buy a house here. Uh. I, yeah, personally, if, for me, I don't care, right, that's the other thing, since I'm using an e-bike as my form of transportation, I don't care how, how expensive gas gets, in fact, the higher it gets, the more people also probably get e-bikes, and then the more uh, we could hopefully push the uh, government in the town to start investing more in bike paths, and that's the other thing, I would, right now, I would put, uh, so that's the other thing, First off, just because I'm uh, in Oahu for like a week doesn't really know I mean the whole state. I, I know the whole state of Hawaii that well. I haven't experienced all of even just Oahu yet. Uh, and I haven't ever been to any of the other islands. So uh, take this with a grain of salt. Right now, it's low A tier, high B tier. The high cost of living is the big part. But the other part is you would think on an island where the weather is perpetu perpetually perfect. It's the same problem LA has. The weather's perpetually perfect. The traffic is hideous. The cost of gasoline is very high. Why would everybody not bike? And the answer is because the infrastructure is terrible. Um, the Interstate Highways Act of 1956 and its consequences have been a disaster for the United States, including Hawaii, because... Uh, I'll put it to you this way. One of the most underrated, hideous, spaghetti bowl interstate junctions in the country is the... H1, H201, H3 Junction uh, near Aloha Stadium in uh, here here on Oahu. I've driven through it now with a friend, and I just looked around, and I'm like, this is some of the most high-value land in the country. How in the fuck are you using it like this? Uh, it, it, if you don't like... If you get pissed off by poor land usage... Um, Go look at that on Google Maps sometimes. It's gonna, it's gonna drive you insane. The worst part is, is it makes it much more difficult than it should be to be a cyclist here. The two big bike paths uh, in and around uh, the harbor are the Nimitz bike path, which is great. That takes you all the way from Kalihikai up to uh, the Makalapa Gate in Pearl Harbor. Great. Then there's also the Pearl Harbor bike path, which takes you all the way from roughly about the Halava Stream, actually a little bit north of the Halava Stream, really, Aiea, um, all the way out. I believe it gets all the way out towards Kapolei now. I haven't been... But, <coughs> excuse me. Um, sorry about that. Um... I haven't been that far west. I don't quite know where the bike path goes to at the moment. I know they're expanding it on that side, which is great, but the fact that the Pearl Harbor bike path and the Nimitz bike path are not connected is just, it's infuriating. It makes no sense. Uh, the Pearl Harbor bike path on the eastern end just kind of spits you out onto a sidewalk, which you're not supposed to ride your bike, especially if it's an e-bike, on the sidewalks here, but the only other option is to get on the Kamehameha Highway, which is what the sidewalk borders, which is a 35 mile an hour road. Now on my e-bike, I can keep up uh, to where I feel relatively safe, so I just get on the Kamehameha. But if you've got a regular bike, there's no way you're doing that. 
There's also uh, a painted bicycle gutter that'll take you, I believe, from the Arizona Monument Road at Ford Island uh, to Makalapa, where you can then uh, turn left on Radford, which also doesn't have a bike lane, uh, and then get on the Nimitz Trail, so or the Nimitz Path. So there's there's this is just it's like a maybe one and a half to two mile gap, if that. It's probably even less between the east end of the Pearl Harbor. Um, bike path and the west end of the Nimitz bike path that if you could fix if you could connect those two with an actual bike trail that people feel was safe you could have people as far west as Kapole, uh cycling all the way to both Pearl Harbor and Hickam Air Force Base because you got to remember the other thing is on a military base everybody drives the speed limit and every and the speed limits are usually below 25 miles an hour it's a military base. Nobody wants to get, you know, pulled over by the MPs, and that makes sense. So what does that mean? What that means is if you were cycling, you'd be very safe on those roads. McAvoy with the five-hole Boston's up to one. Uh, everyone in Toronto is screaming in absolute jubilation, I'm sure. Uh, love to be your maid in your new house. Well, um... I will actually be able to have uh, guests stay with me, uh, but it, that that that's one I'm gonna be a little bit selective about. I'm not saying no, but at the same time, like I have to know who you are if you're coming all the way out here. Otherwise, I'd say get a hotel, um, and we can hang out here. But it's like I gotta know who you are if I'm gonna invite you into my crib. Uh, but yes, uh, Hawaii also does. Okay. When you say Hawaii has rail service, what you mean is the west half, sorry, the leeward west half of Oahu has rail service. Because right now, even though they've been working on it since 2008, uh, the Skyrail, I believe is what it's called, the, the locals here just call it derail. Um, derail stops at, right now it's the Halava stop, and that's at uh, Aloha Stadium. So, you can go all the way out from East Kapole all the way up to Aloha Stadium, but if you want to get to the airport, it doesn't take you there. Not yet. If you want to get to uh, Makalapa at Pearl Harbor, it doesn't take you there yet. If you want to get to Hickam Air Force Base, it doesn't take you there yet. So what this means is because the rail has been so delayed, what it means is that everybody, you know, west of about Aiea has to drive. And as a result, the Kamehameha gets hideously crowded, the H1 gets hideously crowded, uh, and everybody's miserable because everybody has to drive in traffic. Uh, Oahu has some of the worst traffic in the country, believe it or not. At least it is something now. The trouble is that it was supposed to have this something several years ago. Like, the Makalapa station was supposed to open, I think, in 2020 originally. It's 2024, and I think... Hopefully Makalapa opens either later this year or next year. It's complete. The station's complete. I think they're just testing things. Uh, but once Makalapa opens, I mean, now you've got, if again, if you live anywhere around the harbor, uh, it's 2.30 p.m. This new time difference for wreak havoc on my watchability now. Um, Barrett, I want, actually, in the ideas and feedback channel on my Discord, I need some, I need, I'm going to, Place a poll. Someone remind me about how to do this. Place a poll on what y'all's favorite time for me to stream is. Being in Hawaii, it's going to be difficult for me to satisfy everyone, but I want to try and do the best I can. Yeah, it is 2.30 p.m. right now. Uh, so for all y'all, it's already probably evening, early night, but uh, God help you if you're over in the U.K. or uh, if you're my European audience, I'm sorry. Um, that's... Unfortunately, uh, Hawaii is literally on the opposite side of the world. So, uh, for any of yeah, any of my uh, European audience, uh, my condolences. I'll I'll try and make something work. Uh, we'll we'll have to figure that out. Anyway, um, yeah, Toronto. I can't believe Toronto lost again to Boston in round seven. That's just <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, I can actually tune in because I'm home and done with work for the day. So, for what it's worth, right, I'm not going to be able to do this on work days. Uh, not this time. So, 
you know, the only times I'm going to be able to stream realistically, right? I'm just doing this today because it seemed like a good enough time. I haven't really figured out my streaming schedule yet. So y'all can, I would, I would really like help on this one. I don't know. You know what I need to do is just, um, I guess I need to figure out. I should just do a time zone poll. Just like, what time zone are you in? That would be really useful. Um, that that's probably the way I should do it. Okay, so what else was I saying? Um, yeah, the uh, rail. Once the rail gets finally finished, and again, you know, the other one is the airport, right? Generally. Um, most transit systems are supposed to connect to the major airport of the area. And uh, Hawaii's transit, uh, the rail, the rail is built all the way to, I think right now it's built all the way to Kalihikai. Unfortunately, uh, I think Middle Street currently is the last exit that they're going to have there. Unfortunately, um, just because it's built doesn't mean it's open. I believe the the state the station is finished at the airport but it hasn't been opened yet and because of that you can't take the rail anywhere it's really frustrating what's up erased figure good to see you don't mind i'm a little turn up hell yeah it's your birthday sis get fucking turned yeah just checked hawaii might be doable for my birthday trip oh well when is it Thinking Cabo, but Hawaii might be fun. See you and Taurus meet up. I'm down. Um, I don't have a place to offer you yet, though, because I'm not out of. I'm not out of. Or I'm not into my permanent place until June. So, just for what it's worth. Plus, we still haven't met yet, so it's like mm, probably probably shouldn't just do that immediately. But yeah, it'd definitely be fun to hang out. Um. Otherwise, so far I'm loving it here. The food. So, got to talk about this. Uh, food prices are high here, and that includes restaurant prices, right? If you're a restaurant, your input costs are higher here because you have to import most of your food. If you're looking for traditional American fare, you can find a decent burger here and there. Um, but frankly, once you've had the local food here, why the fuck would you ever do that? Why would you ever want a burger when you can get a Locomoco, right? Uh, the food in Hawaii is great. It's a... Honestly... I, so, there is Hawaiian food. So, Hawaiian food is somewhat limited because... when The, the term Hawaiian does not mean resident of Hawaii. It is actually a race. Uh, so, Hawaiian refers mostly to... Uh, descendants of the original native, well, I say natives, but the people who moved and found this island uh, between antiquity and about roughly uh, 1800. Uh, generally speaking, this is most of the food is based off of uh, pork and the taro root, because taro is uh, the it's uh, the basis for poi, if you've ever heard of that, which, by the way, poi is pretty good. Um, you know, that's it's pretty basic food, but it tastes really nice. The pineapple, for instance, is not native to Hawaii. The pineapple was introduced in the 19th century, and it just turns out that it and sugar both grow really well here because it's tropical. So um, as a result, what most people consider food you would get on Hawaii is it's, it's kind of almost like the OG fusion because you've got Japanese immigrants who brought Japanese food. You can get incredible bentos, you can get sushi, you can get po poke, right? Poke, obviously, that fresh fish and the rice, that's got a lot of Japanese influence in it. Like, a lot of poke around here is shoyu. You know, that's that's going to be uh, a lot of Japanese influence. You can get really good Korean here, a lot of Korean influence, Chinese, uh, some pretty good hot pot places around here. Appreciate that, Jason. In Airbnb next time we come Bessie said I'm taking the couch sounds fair to me that seems quite reasonable um, can't, 
caught my my uh, your eyes are staring at something. All right, I'm doing this one on the house. She's I'm in a great mood today. I had a strong pull day in the gym, so hit them traps, hit the buys. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Hang on. Pump is slowly coming back, not quite as defined as I'd like it to be, and then. Slowly working on that Cuba shell on the back end. Get a decent shot here. Yeah. Not bad. Um, what was I saying? Oh, as far as uh, food. So you've got those East Asian influences. Then you've got, obviously, right, the original native Hawaiian influences. Then you've got the influences from Portugal, because apparently quite a few Portuguese people came here to work, which is why uh, chorizo in particular, you can find Portuguese chorizo uh, in a lot of common breakfast items. For instance, uh, McDonald's has a breakfast menu here that you can't find anywhere else in the world, which consists of uh, rice, eggs, chorizo, uh, Portuguese sausage, chorizo, and the ubiquitous spam, which is the American contribution. Spam is unbelievably popular here uh, because it is shelf-stable meat, and during the war years, that's what you could get. Uh, the locals have found ways to make Spam taste really, really good. Unfortunately, Spam is uh, not good for you. Macros-wise, it's uh, pretty high in fat and less high in protein than you'd think. Um, so while it's all right to have Spam musubi every now and then, it's really just a snack. You should treat it more like potato chips than anything else. Uh, although, given the choice between a bag of chips and a Spam musubi, I'm picking the musubi every single time. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything's already staring and zoomed in. So, funny enough, okay. So all this has been happening. Uh, I've gotten a few workouts on in the base gym, but because I don't have my CAC yet, because I haven't started working yet, that happens on the 20th, by the way. Uh, so I'm just enjoying the rest of this week. Basically, this week is more or less a built-in vacation, which wasn't expecting that it would happen, but found the apartment I wanted, and everything's all kind of good. I'm already getting settled in, so I'll take it. But um, because of that, I just have a base access pass, which allows me on the base, but um, depending on who you talk to at the base gym, uh, you either can or cannot go and lift there as I found out the hard way. So instead, I ended up going for a local gym outside of the base, uh, and I went there for the last two days to get a, a lift on, and it's really great. Today, of all things, <laughs> I had, uh, I finished my gym, my workout. It was a really strong day. It was a good pull. I hit uh, croc rows at like 125 pound dumbbells. It's pretty solid. Um, but I had a guy uh, give me his card outside. He explained to me that he uh, was into fashion and was looking for guys uh, to participate in a modeling show in August of this year. So uh, I basically just got asked by a dude, like solicited outside of the gym, asking me, hey, would you like to be a model? Because you look like you could be. And I'm like, oh, that's an ego boost, isn't it? Will I do it? Hmm. I don't know. Really, probably need to clear that one with the Navy first. Be like, yo, are y'all cool with me doing this? Um, I can't imagine they would say no, but it's not one where I'm going to risk my day job on something that just randomly occurred. But, I mean, talk about an ego boost, man. Like, shit. I don't think, right now, I don't think I look that good. Like, I look in the mirror and I'm like, I still got so much fat to trim off um, on my cut, but damn thought really nice so I'm gonna end up talking to that guy a little bit later today and we'll we'll see what happens there but uh, yeah not too bad so strong like bull apparently uh, leads to modeling too so there you go y'all that's uh, that's, that's pretty good it's pretty good but, uh, <laughs> Super stud. I appreciate that, Jason. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I mean, I can't complain. 
So let's think about what else I was going to say. Uh, numbers wise, uh, it's been all right. Definitely f uh, lost a little bit of strength due to the cut cycle. Um, join the Discord to Sailor Homo says, new viewer and a new sub. Love your content, man. Just join the Discord too. Um, are the alerts working? Because I don't see the alerts. Let me make sure here. Huh. Well, if you uh, if you hit the follow button, I do appreciate that. I think we're still fairly close to 2,000 followers. I don't know exactly how many, um, just because I haven't looked in a minute, and so it, it could be anywhere between like 1980 and 2,000. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, mahalo. So I subbed when you weren't live. Oh, okay. Well, Sailor Homo, that's, uh, that's quite a name. Funny enough, because I'm going to be, well, looks like, you know, I'm going to be working for the Navy out here. And, right, obviously, you know, OPSEC would say that maybe I shouldn't say who I'm working for. But look, okay, I'm a nuclear engineer. I'm not going to tell people I'm not. And I'm in Hawaii what other thing would I be doing? Like, what else would a nuclear engineer be doing on this island? There's really only one option. So, you know, I'm not going to say specifically what I do, also because I don't really know yet, but uh, it, it's one of those things where, you know, I can, I could just sit there and say, I'm a nuclear engineer on Oahu. You can figure out what I do from there, but whatever. Um, you know, if my employer gives me grief about that, I'll stop, but like, come on. That's a little bit silly. Uh, let's see, so that's more or less it. That's been my life uh, so far. I got to see one of my cousins who just happened to be out in uh, Waikiki while I was here, because uh, she had gotten a good deal on a hotel, so it was cool to see her. Um, that was nice. Uh, Cookie Baker? <laughs> no, I don't think there are any atomic cookie bakers out here. I don't think the reactors uh, are, are being used for that. But, you know, I could be could be wrong. Could be wrong. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get onto one of the ships and learn, oh, yes, they really are making atomic cookies down here. If they are, Mikey, I'll let you know. Titans over the season against Drake May and the Pats Gerard Mayo, the Pats H. Head coach comes back to Tennessee. Oh, that should be interesting. That should be real interesting. Um, interestingly enough, speaking of, NFL is more popular than I realized out here in Hawaii. I guess you wouldn't think so, but then you got to remember, Aloha Stadium is where the Pro Bowl was held for, gosh, what, 30 years? More? Um, unfortunately, it's not anymore, partially because Aloha Stadium's kind of decrepit. Um, I think they're talking about... Okay. Speaking of, all right, Urbanist Rant. Speaking of ways you could connect the two bike paths and also build a shit ton of housing which Oahu desperately needs. What you could do is demolish Aloha Stadium and use that and the adjacent parking lots to build uh, Tokyo-style dense levels of housing. Would they be big apartments? Probably not. Would they be single-family homes? I'd sure hope not. Uh, you need more efficient housing units uh, to satisfy demand out here. If, if I were whatever entity controls the land on Aloha Stadium, I don't know if that's County of Honolulu, I don't know if that's the state of Hawaii, I don't know if that's some private company, that's what I would be looking at doing. Um, furthermore, right, you know, you could rent, you, if you do that, you have now an ability, you can rent that out to all the military families. So there is base housing and military housing uh, in and around the multitude of uh, bases here in uh, on Oahu. So this includes Pearl Harbor, Hickam Air Force Base, the Schofield Barracks and Wheeler Army Airfield up in the middle of the island, and on the windward side, Marine Base at Kaneohe Bay. However, right, most of the most of that base housing is single-family homes. It's meant for families. What about your enlisted guys, your guys who are, you know, or your single young officers? These are guys who don't need a three-bedroom house with a lawn and a two-car garage. They'd be much better served with some more apartments. Uh, and in terms of military housing, that doesn't exist. 
Still wearing my Polo Malo jersey proudly. Fight on. Oh, yeah. Uh, where does Hawaii play football at? So, yes. Um, the University of Hawaii at Manoa used to play in the Aloha Stadium. Now they've built a uh, much smaller stadium on campus because... So, right, if you live here... Do you really want to go see UH play, or would you rather go do literally anything else on this absolutely gorgeous island? Uh, and most people say, I'd rather go do something else. Apparently the real one to go to around UH is baseball games, which I would, I'd be about. CS April, they get huge bank for military housing over there, though. That's, well, that's sort of what I'm saying. Right, if you want to build military housing, and I don't know if that's what you'd want to do on that land, I would say build some for the locals, because the locals are getting priced out, which is really sad. Um, you Build it densely. That's the only way you can solve this. The only way to solve the housing crisis is building more housing. It is a supply and demand issue. We're, I mean, we're talking economics 101 here. Everybody likes to say, oh, it's, you know, people coming in and flipping houses, or it's BlackRock or whatever. No, 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 no. Even BlackRock, right, the big corporations that are starting to invest in housing, they control like less than 2% of the market. It's not, a, the problem is that in 2008, we stopped collectively as a country building new housing and we kind of just didn't start it and we haven't really fixed that gap. I would go to Maui for the Maui Invitational in November. So that's sort of the other one. Um, Tourism's a bit of a sketchy subject here. Uh, I think on Oahu it's a little bit more accepted because that's just there's a little bit more resources to support it here. But I know a lot of the time on Maui, on Kauai, on um, the Big Island, it's it's like this. Tourism on one hand is sort of the lifeline of those economies, so they can't. You, they can't get rid of it completely, but it also has some really negative side effects in terms of, you know, all the nice places where the locals would like to go get packed with tourists all the time. Like, nobody here on Oahu, just as a, an immediate example, nobody here on Oahu, none of the locals really go to Diamond Head. Even though Diamond Head is fantastically beautiful, it's so close to Waikiki that most people who go there are tourists. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just like, uh, you know, having talked to a few of the locals here, a lot of them really, really liked the pandemic because it meant they could go to Waikiki, they could go to Diamond Head, they could go to, you know, anywhere downtown uh, and and enjoy it for themselves for a change. Where I live, there's a naval weapons base. It's very different housing than that part. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, there is, speaking of uh, other naval stations, you know, once I work this job, if I find, you know, that I live here for a couple of years and I fall uh, out of love with the island, and right now I would say I have fallen pretty pretty much in love with the island, there's a few things I would change, like, you know, making this more bike-friendly, because if you do that, that makes traffic better for everyone. But apart from that, if I were, you know, if I fall out of love with the island, you know, I could go to a lot of different places in the Pacific. Right, there's always Bremerton if I want to go to the northwest. There's San Diego if I just feel though as though Oahu somehow isn't expensive enough. Uh, there is um, Kings Bay if I felt like moving back to the deep south for some reason. And then there is also Guam if I felt like I love the beach and island life, but Oahu is a bit too built up for my liking. I'd rather be in a place where I have nothing to do but lift and hit the beach. So... We'll see on that one. But so far, I have really enjoyed it here. It's been an absolute blast. I'm going to go grab some water real quick. Excuse me. Tell you what, we do that. Maybe I could even take y'all outside. I probably shouldn't do that. That might give away where I am. So, BRB, y'all.
There we go. I'm back. Be cool to come back and I'd show you around. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a good time. Count me in. Yeah, so if any of y'all want to visit here, I'm down. Don't bother me none. Um, I don't really know what my stream schedule is going to look like from here. I'm going to try and figure that out over the next few days to weeks. Um, obviously, once I start working, it's going to depend on what my hours are at work. It sounds like it really depends on what division you're in uh, and who your supervisors are as to what schedule. There are some that work five tens or five four or ah, sorry five eights. Some that work four tens. Some that work a nine eighty schedule. Um, and then some groups that get enough overtime to where they're not doing either. So if I'm working overtime, you know, out there it's DOD, right? You're you're out there for a mission. You're out there to support the U.S. Navy. So if I get asked to work overtime, I'm going to say yes. I, I'm not really going to have a choice, frankly. So in the event. Excuse me. In the event that happens, I'm, um, you know, I'm gonna see what I can do in terms of the stream. But right now, I just, I can't, uh, I can't really promise a ton with the stream. I don't really know what the schedule is gonna be yet. Uh, I can definitely try and stream. I think what I'm gonna try and do, at least at first, is stream once a week, just giving you guys life updates. And right at the moment, it's other than maybe body exercises, chatting, and, you know, that sort of more generic stuff, I'm not going to be able to do much more. Even playing games, right, I was doing that on my computer tower. I don't have that with me right now. It's still back in the mainland, uh, and I'm going to get it in a few weeks. But I'm not going to get it until I move into my main place. So once I get to my main place, though, the nice thing is I should, um, and I'll talk with the apartment people there, but I may be able to uh, do a lifting stream there. It's going to depend on what the Wi-Fi situation is. There will be a couple question marks, but may be able to make that happen. If I do, great. If not, hey, no big deal. Green Bay expected to hire Doug Gottlieb. Hmm, interesting. Did you move? What happened in life? Okay. Okay, yeah, so CS April. Uh, let me go ahead and give you a summation of what all I've been talking about for the last oof, almost hour and a half now. Um, I have moved from South Carolina to Hawaii. I am now on the island of Oahu, and uh, it's for a new job, which I start in a few days. Do you still talk to my old roommate? Oh, Dodger? Yes, yeah, so uh, our good friend Dodger is Zion. I already sent her a shout out, so I'm not doing a second one. Uh, successfully found a new job in Myrtle Beach. So she left my place in South Carolina as well. Uh, she's got some big things she's working on. I think it's some sort of, I don't know if it's a screenplay or what, um, but she's working on something that seems like it's going really well. So check in on uh, her channel if you want. Used to live in Hawaii. Really, CS, is that is that true? Deer just popped. It's ringing. Hmm. That was weird. Um on Alamo on Alamoana Boulevard, about two blocks from Waikiki. Really? Well, all right. It's a small world. So I'm working at Pearl Harbor. Um, that's why I'm out here. Uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about. So speaking of biking and, you know, using my e-bike to commute here, I have also joined the Hawaii Bike League. So if any of my audience is uh, on the Aloha State uh, and wants to join a really good cause, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, if any of y'all are in or around the uh, Honolulu metro area, there is an event on the 18th where I will be... Uh, I will be participating. It's a, a ride from uh, Kakaako all the way over to the capital, and it's just going to be a peaceful demonstration. It's going to be to say, hey, we would really like to see some better cycling infrastructure so that way 
more people on Hawaii can get out of cars uh, onto bicycles, it'll improve everybody. It'll improve local health. It'll decrease reliance on imported oil. It'll decrease traffic congestion, and it's going to make everybody happier. Happy about your move thus far. I've been here for five days. Uh, love how much I walked there. I barely drove. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I'm going to... I'm, I'm not going to own a car if I can avoid it. If I have to, if I find that I absolutely must get a car for convenience reasons, um, I will probably... I, I'm going to try and do that at least several months from now because, right, I've still got first month's rent and security deposit and all that jazz, so... You know, I don't really want to do that any faster than I have to. Femboy in the lobby. How is the move? Pretty great. I am successfully here on the Aloha State, so let me just uh, a little focus in here. Uh, it's not going to do it, is it? Damn, it was doing it earlier. There it goes. So you can see uh, that blue body of water out there. That would be Pearl Harbor, so it's pretty nice. Got bored really fast. Quickly got them until I was literally stuck on an island. Living out there, you'll eventually need one since you're far away from everything, you know. I don't know. Uh, what am I far away from here? That's the thing. Oahu's not big. Uh, you know, getting around. The only thing I'd really want a car for is to go over to the windward side or the north shore. And look, as fun as that would be, Right now, I've got my whole life to set up here on the leeward side. Um, so, like, that can wait several months. But, you know, getting bored, I don't think I'm going to get that bored, frankly. Because, like, let me be real with you. All it takes for me to be happy is a beach and a gym. I'm not a complicated man. I like lifting weights. I like being on the beach to show off my body. Uh, and also just to play in the sand and play in the waves. I'll probably get a surfboard. I'd, I'd really like to learn how to surf here. Very true, I'm not a beach person. Ragulan, hi, I'm at the gym, about to lift. I want to say hello. Good to see you. Uh, aloha. What you calling my government name? Today. Oh, it's been a hot minute. Welcome back on in today. Uh, yeah, it, it's been... Uh, it's been quite a while but I've successfully moved out to the islands I'm enjoying it so far it's uh, I've already got my uh, I've already got my bike that's the other thing too you know you could you could try to stay away from the tourists that seems to be what a lot of the locals do but for me you know I don't mind go and hang out with them because it's cool you know you get to you can show uh, all the new people all the cool stuff uh, that's on the island and there really is a lot here. I mean, it's what's wild is there's like different microclimates on this island I mean you go over to the windward side. It's totally different vibe than the leeward side you go over to Eva side It's totally different vibe from the town like there's a There's definitely a lot more than meets the eye on what is otherwise a small island you know, You've got a lot of the military culture. You've got a lot of East Asian culture here Ugh, the amount of it's just been wild just going into like times or food land i haven't been to a don quixote yet i need to do that um but going in there i've i found stuff from japan that i hadn't seen in 20 years since we lived in okinawa or on the mainland in japan i like the city too much to move to the islands well i mean Honolulu is a big city it's i think what close to a million people like Maybe not quite. Maybe the metro Honolulu area is about a million people. But uh, the, the city of Honolulu is not small. I mean, it is the biggest city, I think, within like a 2,000-mile radius or something like that. I think to find a bigger city, you have to go to Los Angeles um, or in the opposite direction, I think, Jakarta? Manila? One of those cities in either the Indonesia or the Philippines. <laughs> Should consider there then. Well, the trouble is, right, so I'm out here because I've got a job out here. Um, the cost of living is extremely... Oh, never mind. You're in Toronto. Um, anything will be... I really don't get why people live in Toronto. 
you have the cost of living of San Francisco and the weather of Cleveland. What's the upside? Why, why would you choose to live there? You've also got the biggest joke in all of professional sports. I don't think I need to tell you what that is, but you already know what that is. There's uh, a man named Steve on YouTube who yells about them all the time. It's quite funny. I don't even hate the Leafs. I don't even hate them. Um, but I 100% am one of the sickos who tunes in whenever the Leafs do something really, really stupid or really, really bad just to watch Steve lose his mind. I, I don't know why. Man, he does it to himself. He's just much more entertaining when he's screaming uh, than anything else. Hey, Borga. All right. Yeah, um, the move turned out really well. <laughs> Chad Kelly's becoming a wall cow for the Argos. God, Chad Kelly's their head coach? That's going to work out well. The Bruins are just our daddies. I mean, hard to argue otherwise at this point. The Leafs are... The Leafs are either... I, I think they're cursed, but they're also a gong show. No, the Leafs do not... Do not take the Toronto Maple Leafs seriously until proven otherwise at this point. I mean, they're a meme! They're a meme at this point. Oh, Chad Kelly's the QB. No, I'm thinking of Chip Kelly, excuse me. Not Chad Kelly, excuse me, yeah. Thinking of Chip Kelly, that's all I was thinking, head coach. Because Chip Kelly was not very good either. <laughs> But yeah, it's been it's been real nice. Um, it's definitely been a great couple of uh, couple of months, really. Make sure I don't have anything I need to do. Ooh, sweet. Let's spend half of our cap space on four forwards. I mean, as a Capitals fan, I don't think I can throw too many rocks there, but at least one of our forwards is trying to break the single hardest record in hockey. The Love Guru makes him a meme further than they already are. Oh my god, I forgot about the fucking Love Guru. Let's see. Hey, alright, I got the, uh, welcome to the Hawaii Bicycle... Bi ah. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, at least, at least I uh, pronounced Hawaii somewhat correctly before butchering bicycling. <laughs> saying okay, I will say uh, saying words with the proper uh, pronunciation I in this island and on this state is not easy. Um, I I feel like I've butchered a lot of. Uh, Hawaiian words here, and I feel bad about it. I'm trying my best to learn, but it's just, it takes some time. It's just, uh... It's one of those things where it's like a lot of repeating letters, because Hawaiian was not a written language until the 1800s, so the... It, like, it, it's because it was only became a written language in the 1800s, they used the Latin alphabet, but the way Hawaiian sounds kind of lends itself much more to, like, characters, I guess, is the way I'd say it. But, uh, you know, g good luck good luck trying to fix that now. So this is why you get some really, really long words in Hawaiian. <laughs> um, that's cool. Welcome to the Hawaii Bicycling League, Ohana. That's kind of cool. Yay! I'm really excited about uh, this ride coming up on the 18th. Yes, like the state fish, uh, I've read that word, and I'm not going to try and pronounce it on stream. I don't need to get kicked off of this island that fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Huma huma nuka nuka apu au au. I think that was right. It's close enough. <laughs> mm 
Blue Jays is turning a direct DVD shark movie. God, I haven't even been paying attention to baseball. How are my Nats doing? Are we out of the cellar? Let's find out. What are my Nationals doing? I have, I've been so busy. I've paid zero attention to baseball this year because I've been like, you know, going across the country and then across the ocean. Let's see MLB standings. Hopefully they're not in the. If look, my goal for the Nationals this year is for them to not be in fifth place. If they can do that. I'm happy. Yo, we're 500. Let's go. I'm actually really happy about that. Ha! <laughs> we're doing better than the Mets. That's what really matters. Speaking of the biggest meme in baseball. <laughs> Let's see. God, Baltimore is really good. They're off to a good start. AL West. Oh, the Rangers are surprisingly mid for the national champions. Brewers. Okay, yeah, LA is good. But LA is usually really good because they just buy an incredibly good roster and pay a luxury tax. Giants aren't doing so hot. Padres are 500. Bro, what the fuck? How are the Phillies the best team in baseball? Holy shit. The Nationals are... Wow, eight and a half games back already. That's, uh... That's not good. Ooh, yeah, the Reds are tied with the Cards. That's that's not good. Although at least we can laugh. It's good. Finally, the Cardinals suck for a little while. Good. They need to. Just weren't you just tired of the Cardinals always being the good team in the Central? So let's see here. I know it's early, but wild card team. So. The Nationals are tied with the Padres for the sixth and final spot. So that's kind of neat. Granted, we're only 40 games into the season, but at the corner way mark, I can't complain. I'm happy with them being 500. Let's see here. Let's see scores. The Nationals, oh, well, we're about to go back below 500 because we're losing to the White Sox. Oh, well. But we beat the White Sox yesterday. Let's see, MLB standings by strength of schedule. That'll be interesting. Let's see where the Nats are. Yes, the Philadelphia Phillies have... Oh, that's interesting. So, apparently the Phillies have had a super easy SOS, uh, speaking of. We're... Erase figure. We're talking about baseball. Let's see. The Philadelphia Phillies lost their opening series against the Braves and have not played a team that is currently over 500 since. Holy shit. Mm. Well, I'm happy. My Nats are 500. That's, uh better than they've been in several years the rebuild was always going to take time i don't expect the nationals to be a playoff caliber team this year i do expect them to finish at least at the absolute worst fourth place in the nl east so i just want them to be not a dumpster fire that's the main goal um whew. so we've been going for almost two hours so I think that's really all I had to share with you guys. Um, I could do, I guess, some push-ups or some abs real quick, and then maybe one final Q&A, and then I think I'm going to sign off. Probably do a lot more on the Discord. Kind of, I know it feels like the stream's been in hibernation the last few weeks, because um, I didn't really have a, uh, I haven't really had much of a, the time to do so. But I, I think that's we're gonna slowly bring the stream out of hibernation. What are your thoughts on Applebee's? Um, why would you ever go there? Like, I guess they have decent like coupons and deals and gimmicks to get people in the door. But even then, you know, if I want to go out, I want to have food that I really enjoy. And Applebee's is fine, but like, I I feel like I can cook better at home than Applebee's, so why would I do it, you know? 
All right, I'm going to bang out a set of push-ups. You have been busy. Yeah, I appreciate that. Oh, I've also uh, continued listening to music since I was uh, last with y'all. Finished listening to Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, that, they were really good. Finished listening to uh, the Yardbirds. And right now I'm listening to, been listening to the whole thing for uh, the whole discography of Jefferson Airplane. And that's been really good. That's been uh, quite nice. So we're going to turn the camera down. See if I can't do this properly. Um, that should work. Y'all get the top down view of the push ups, I suppose. Although there are worse things, right? So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. All right. One, two, one, two, three. Yep. Oops, there we go. Here we go, it's 30. All right, do we got any other further questions? Otherwise, I think we're gonna end the stream. We can look to raid, actually. That's a really good question. Who do we raid? It's been such a long time since I was live. But uh, yeah, Big Red, by the way, congratulations. Super happy to see you. Uh, Super happy to see you getting that new job you were looking for. See who we got. We've got Tomo, Maliki. I haven't raided Tomo in a while. Have you been able? Hey, thanks for the sub, Borga. Oh, it's Mikey. Thank you very, very much for the gift sub. Uh, Evans Epic, good to see you. Haven't seen you in a hot minute. Aloha. Um... Have you been able to sneak in some OSRS you being busy? No. I haven't played RuneScape since I was back in South Carolina. I just haven't had the time. I've, I, it's really been, uh, I'm only just now coming up for air after this big, long trip. But yeah, let's see how Holder here is doing. Or not Holder, uh, Tomo Fit. Yeah, let's go raid Tomo. I haven't raided Tomo in a hot minute. So we're going to raid Tomo Fit. Yeah. Alright. So, yep, there you go. There's the raid message. It's Bull Rush. Um, that's going to be it for me today. So I do not know when my stream schedule is going to allow me to stream next. Probably will again before Monday. I don't know when. If you guys have suggestions on time zones, I'm going to need your thoughts on the Discord. So I'm going to make a poll for that. Otherwise, um, thank you all very much for coming in. I know this has been kind of a chill stream. We've just been talking, but thanks for sticking around. Thank you very much for the follows, the subs, and uh, y'all, as always, uh, make good decisions. It's good decisions form your actions. Those actions form your habits, those habits form your values, those values form an ethos. It can be the guys start through the rough waters of life. Much love, y'all. Come in for the hug. Ferdy hugs you too. YouTube. It's been fun. See you later.